You said during the uh, PV industry forum that uh, growing from 1.3 billion to 2 billion euros was business as usual. Can you explain sort of the highlights of QCell's strategy to achieve the revenue goal? Yeah, um, I think at this stage of the industry development, the industry is still very short on product. That's determining growth. Um, we're going to continue in this mode, I think, for the rest of this year, for next year, 2010, we'll probably see more normalization on the supply side. And to really book the growth, get the security for that, because obviously expansion you want to do with your suppliers, you want to do with your customers, you've got to expand your own system, uh, you need that forward-looking portfolio on the sourcing side. So this is one very important element to secure that. Additionally to that, obviously, with the uh, investments we're making on the thin films, we will look to very rapidly expand other uh, technologies as well. When I say business as usual, it really is that case. If you look at the year-on-year -year, uh, increases either on production or on revenue, it's always had that type of jump in it. Um, we're in an industry that's growing at more than 50% a year. Business as usual is to grow at more than 50% a year. And uh, what are QCL's future investment plans? Um, as you're aware, we have announced a number of investments in Talheim, which is our center, in Malaysia, and in Mexico. Um, the main investment we've got running at the Talheim uh, site is the expansion of what we call a Line 6. This is where we laid the foundation of this last year with Line 5 and are continuing that expansion there. We're actually building four factories at the moment on Sora Valley um, and these are very much expansions in thin film for example in uh, Calixo uh, these are expansions in the wafering aspects to complement the activities on the cell etc etc and we've got the Solibro work we've got the EverQ work all of this sort of stuff so we're seeing very strong expansion there and we are today in Solar Valley about 3,500 people I have a bet and a commitment to the mayor of Talheim 5,000 at least in 2010, and we think we'll get that. Parallel to this, we've announced Malaysia. Um, at the moment, we've started the building of a very, very large complex, a Solar Valley 2, we call it, in Malaysia. And this is going to be a very large cell wafer ingotting complex, and we'll look to bring other technologies there as time goes on. What we've also done is to secure the expansion in Mexico, we will need this when you look actually at the development path of Q cells. Last year we produced 390 megawatts. In the year 2010, we will produce at least a factor five more than that. And that's just the start of the growth track. So we'll need more manufacturing locations. The world is globalizing, photovoltaic is globalizing, it's a global market. Uh, in the last quarter, we exported 70%. And so we obviously need that global manufacturing network. And um, the PV industry is obviously rapidly changing. How do you sort of intend to stay ahead of the technology curve? The, one of the key and determining factors in this industry is obviously the capability of the industry to get costs down so we get into the competitive realm as quickly as possible. Technology plays a key role regardless of which type of activity you're doing, uh, strangely enough. On the crystalline silicon aspect, there are um, huge technological potentials, be it through increasing of efficiencies, be it through um, managing the substrate dimension, size, thickness, etc. Sawing thinner, metallurgical silicon is opening new boundaries. And the thin films have huge potentials. Each of these thin film businesses has the potential to get down below grid parity economics and then become a business in its own right. Um, so, so we're putting a lot of investment into technology. Example, last year we built a 50 million euro R&D center for the cell. Here we're going to be developing the next generation concepts in the crystalline silicon area. How many more years of market support do you need, or market support programs do you need in order to remain cost effective? The industry is still young. And I think when you look at the development of this industry as an energy industry compared to other industries, it takes a number of years generally to get from the pre-competitive phase into the competitive phase. The way energy pricing is going, we expect in Germany will probably be 
at or around retail grid parity on the roof compared to electricity from the plug in probably 2014, 2015. Now this can be a little bit quicker if we can accelerate cost reduction, if alternative energy prices go up, if the prices for the energy alternatives increase such as we're seeing on crude oil. In countries like uh, Italy, we'll see this more quickly. Just simply, they're paying similar type of pricing as in uh, Northern Europe, and they've got so much more sun. California is there in certain segments already. Our job as an industry is to accelerate that trend. The industry is getting to a scale now where the imperative is really to get into that competitive zone as quickly as possible. And that is just the start. The real job of this industry is grid parity and beyond. The beyond is where it gets really sexy. The reasons behind your, the establishment of the new production plants in Malaysia and Mexico? It's got a number of reasons. Uh, number one, obviously, with just the physical expansion we're doing, we'll, we'll need multi, a multi-site constellation. Um, what we also see is there are some financial aspects, some production technology aspects there. Um, when you look at how the industry is developing, we need to go globalized. The competitive environment will mean, mean, will mean that you have to operate in different currency zones. It's not too much fun at the current exchange rates to be a major exporter, and particularly when the US market clicks in, which is dollar denominated, you obviously need dollar related economics. So, so this is one of the aspects. Obviously, factor costs aspect for more mature technology is also a driving force there. And uh, will this eliminate the need for further expansion in Germany um, and maybe other, other locations that you're considering? We expect to um, expand very strongly on all of our three production sites. And are there any other locations you're considering? At the moment not, but I think when you look at the development of this market, and if you take an analogy wind for example, a lot of the expansion, the global expansion on the wind side has also followed local content manufacturing and we'll probably see similar types of trends but I think we, will, we wish to base the, the, the main focus of the production economics around a number of hubs and then we'll look at other opportunistic aspects to develop our production net network in line with developing local industries, local markets at a later stage. For now it's not really the relevant issue. Okay. Uh, Q-Sales has put itself in a position in investing in different technologies. Uh, what's the strategy behind diversifying your technology investments? The strategy is not diversifying. That's only a consequence of the strategy. And it's not portfolio. That's also only a consequence of the strategy. When you do the analysis on the thin film technologies and the technology plays we've invested in, all of these have a very, very strong economic potential to get to a cost situation and value adding situation well below uh, uh, retail grid type of economics, in which case the businesses are themselves. So that's really the main driving force. We've seen these potentials. Now, obviously, in terms of setting up this strategy, we have restrictions on our own management breath, technology breath, etc. We've actually, on the CIGS, joint ventured or created a common company with, uh, with Solibro AB from uh, Sweden on the Carvin Telleried with Solar Fields, um, etc. etc. So we, we've either bought in technologies where we needed to complement or where we've been able to leverage our own technology competences. We've done that. We've actually structured these com as individual companies because they're very focused, obviously, on gaining excellence, competitive advantage, and pushing the development within their own areas. And would you expect R&D spending to increase in order to achieve the higher cell conversion efficiencies in the future? I think as an industry are not spending enough on R&D at the moment. If you look at the R&D spend rate compared to other industries, particularly very innovative, technologically driven industries, we're on the low side. This is actually more of a factor of you cannot spend enough. You cannot spend enough in terms of we're still resource people constrained. The industry is going into this phase at the moment. But as soon as we start going away from incrementally developed technology to more ra radical technologies, we then get into actually somewhat larger technological commitments, such as launching a whole new uh, cell generation, uh, means a lot of change, means a lot of investment, prototyping, things like this. This is actually where most of the uh, money will go. 
I find it in 2007, QCells became the number one cell producer. How do you intend to maintain the leading position? The most important thing is not the kudos associated with that position. The most important thing is how do we actually get the cost down? How do we develop the markets and the growth platforms that we need? If we get these two things right, the third one, maintaining that position, comes out as a byproduct. But our main objection, uh, ob objectives are obviously on the cost to get into the competitive zone as quickly as possible and to develop a lot on the market side. Um, and then the rest, we'll see how we get there.